that wall again These demons have become my friends Living off perks and biker dance Next to the same old shovel Just a different load of shit I'm an animal Eating these pills like a cannibal is a tangible Got a monkey on my back and it's trained to attack Every time I get ahead or I'm on the right track What the fuck? Feel like I'm living in a bubble Pull myself from the rubble But I'm still seeing double My girl, she say I'm losing it Got a brand new script but I'm abusing it Got a heart full of pain that I couldn't ever tame And I'm still ain't trying to find what to do with it Maybe what I need is a place that I can breathe And a life that I can leave but I'm losing it They say pray to God and he'll save me But he can have this life that he gave me And take back the shit that my mother did And take back the drugs that enslaved me And bring back the friends that I've lost in life Because they the ones who made me And get back the time that I lost inside Because of life a crime it didn't pay me Maybe when I wake up it'll all be a dream Maybe then I won't find it so hard to believe Maybe then everybody in my life that I hurt can move on Cause my body stays down in the dirt It's so so what's happening now? I know I need to kick it, but I don't know how. I know my kids need me. We about to lose the house. Don't believe a damn thing coming out of my mouth. They tired of seeing dad nod out on the couch. Burn holes in my clothes, cigarette in my mouth. The car got took up next is a cable. Fucking jerk, go to work, put some food on the table. Why we gotta live in a broken home? Why we broke as fuck, always left alone? Why you always high and always sick? And why you always mad acting like a dick? And why the mom leave when she could've stayed? How come nothing happens when we pray? Why we wearing no shit when we go to school And why you at home pulling all your tools We ain't asked for this, so what's after this And all you ever do is shoot pills and shit You supposed to be a dad, but you just a bitch Where the habit so bad you forgot your kids It's so... So what's happening now? I wanna be a father, but I don't know how. I wanna be the man that they all know I can't be. Instead, I'm a deadbeat, running on empty. A gun to the head, pull the trigger, that's plan B. I feel like my family is better off without me. I don't even think they like a single thing about me. If this is the end, motherfucker, you can count me in. interrupt our program to bring you this important message uh, New York here listen I know a lot of you guys are here for the Lance interview he talks about possible cancer YouTube life what's going on with his son music Jay Williams everything it's coming but I needed to stop by for a minute for a little public service announcement I'll try to make this quick when I came on YouTube, I had no idea there was different genres, that there was small channels, that there was different clicks. I had no idea how it worked. Did I ever watch YouTube? Of course I did. I watched Jay Williams. But most of my watching was like Brian Bars check. I like to watch how it's made videos. I like to watch different gun videos. There's a lot of, you know, I'm into the commercial side of YouTube is the best way to put it. As when you do a YouTube search for something that I like to watch, usually big channels come up. But watching Jay Williams, you guys know the story. I don't got to get into it. I liked the guy. I was actually rooting for him. A whole bunch of bullshit happened. I couldn't believe that that just got away with it. And I made a video. This is where I have to be honest with myself about some things. The video took off. So I said to myself, here's the formula. I got the formula. I know how to get big on YouTube, which I didn't even know I never wanted. So I made another video on Jay Williams. Another one, another one. A lot of people were agreeing with him, but tons of people, it's almost like they were waiting for one person to come in and, you know, say something about the church, a lot of Jay Saints. And I was that one person who crossed that line because I didn't know what would follow and I had no idea about how this all works. And... I did stupid shit and I kept going and going and going. Now that I was in the YouTube genre, I was watching people. In the beginning, I seen people calling each other out to fight and hell, you're a man, you wanna fight somebody? Go fight them. Then I started realizing, the other day I counted 75, and I don't watch all the videos, people trying to fight other people and it never happens. I started watching over the course of five months it only took people stabbing each other in the back over and over and over again. I came out bad, I did, but I also put a lot of those videos I got rid of or I put them down and I try to get comical. 
Because the more I watched it, the more I hated what I did when I first came out. YouTube, to me, I want to get on here and I want to laugh and have fun and escape from the world. I have enough problems going on. I got businesses. I got work. I got my dad. I got family. I don't need to come on here and be mad. If I'm on here mad, I might as well just watch TV and forget about YouTube, right? But the hardest thing I'm learning is to not get sucked in. Unfortunately, somebody says your name, now you're fighting, you're arguing, you're screaming. There's been times I missed seeing my father because I was screaming, making YouTube videos on people. And it's horrible. It really actually is horrible. Basically, and I was doing it for a while, it's a bunch of grown men bad-mouthing other grown men, trying to destroy him, trying to hurt him, trying to do this, trying to do that, and I don't want a part of it. A lot of people like saying, oh, you played YouTube like chess, you knew that these videos would hit. Listen. Everything I said about Jay Williams and doing drugs, he just admitted to. So if I was doing that, wouldn't I make a bunch of Jay Williams videos? Basically just prove my point. Now that the case is closed, wouldn't I get the paperwork that they wouldn't give you while the case is open? I don't want to do that. In ways, I actually apologize to Jay. Not in all ways, but in some ways. I never wanted to hurt his channel. I never wanted to hurt him. I try to kind of want to help the guy do the right thing and get back to where he was in life but he's not that type of person who wants any help he basically hates you if you have constructive criticism and that is what it is but i stopped i didn't go after him anymore i'm not going to if you make 20 videos that's one thing it's still horrible if you make 30 and 40 and you keep going and you keep go it's disgusting why would i want to hurt another man's wallet do i believe all jay's stories no and i can tell funny things and some stuff that came to light lately but who cares he's a storyteller whether it's bullshit or not he's a storyteller people like watching him he makes a lot of money off people like watching him and i would never want to take that from the man ever ever he got caught up you know he went against everything he believes in he did he got caught up but still people get caught up i heard jd delay tell a story the other night about how jay was going on ian bick but he didn't want to stay overnight because he always wants to tuck his kid into bed every night. And it made me look past all the bullshit of YouTube and realize that this is a man that was a bad person for a long time. Changed. And yeah, he has issues. He's not humble. He has a huge ego. We can talk about that. But in general, he's just a man. He's a man who was a criminal who managed to make a life on YouTube, make a better life for his son, buy a home, do all this stuff, and he still wants to tuck his son in every night for bed. Why would I want to hurt that? I don't want to hurt that. Now, at certain points, your hand gets forced, and I should say that that's not even possible, and just back, but your hand can be forced. I'm not just going to sit here like a lame either. But the thought of Jay going to jail for seven months and not seeing his son fucking sucks. And even my own subs, I'm going to lose people for even saying this because the majority of my subs are the people against Jay. And when everything was peaky, peachy dory and he was just making bank or fake store, whatever it was, that was fine because he was doing well. But now he had a little bit of a downfall. So now when people jump into my comments and they're like, yeah, he's a liar, he's this, he's that, I don't see it the same anymore. I see it as kicking a man when he's down. It's over. What are we going to get out of it by talking more bad about the man? I don't wish jail upon him. I wish him fucking to hit the lotto and have his son be taken care of for life. Seven months, even if he comes back and clumps right to the top of YouTube again, he's losing money over those seven months. And it sucks. I wish that upon nobody. Now you can say what you want about me. But Lance, I came at Big Lance when I came out. Until I talked to the man and said, wow, maybe he lied about all the shit in the past, but he tells me the truth. He tells me he lied. He tells me he's an addict. He tells me this. He tells me that. Became friends with him. I got in some beef with the YouTube streets. I still support them. Even if I leave YouTube, which is very possible, I'll still click on to see New Age Plug, hopefully make it to the top. I made my prediction by the end of this year he's going to be doing it. That doesn't mean I like everybody he rolls with or I love the YouTube streets, but I think he's talented. He has a calling as like a talk show host or some radio show host because he can step into a war, absolute anarchy, and make sense of it. 
say his opinion without getting into the fight. He's good. And me and him have our problems. We always will. It's just the way it is. But even through those problems, and even when we were really had problems, I always respected him. I think in the video I made about him, I told you to sub to the YouTube streets. I don't like seeing people lose. But I'm starting to realize on YouTube, everybody wants to see you lose. Everybody wants to see you do as worse as possible. I don't know if maybe it's a good, like, look at humanity and how people actually are. It's pretty disgusting. You know, you got channels like Yahoo is King. Here's a man who went to prison who tells absolute true stories, who has found God. And just because he made some turtle videos about another YouTuber, comical, had his life dragged through the fucking mud, his wife, his kids, his subs. You got guys who are literally out there just destroying people with thousands of subs. And this guy who has a great message, great videos, has 200 subs. Because nobody wants to see the race car. Everybody wants to see the race car when it's on fire. I'm really not that way. This is why I haven't made a video in months. Also, you guys are crazy. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing if you have time for this. Maybe you don't like watching TV. But I cannot keep up with everything going on on YouTube. I have too much going on in my real life. And I don't know how you guys do it. I'm not saying anything bad by saying that. Because you figure it out. But I don't know how you guys do it. So I can't be up to date. Be up to date. And I also stop doing my opinions. Because every time I give my opinion, it turns into, oh, you talk bad about this one, or you talk bad about this one. Because in the world of YouTube, you can't disagree with somebody without being their enemy. It's like the real world, but fucking completely backwards. I said that before, and I'll say it again. That was my biggest call ever. YouTube is backwards. People want to see people fail. People want to see friends turn on each other. People want to see somebody trashed as bad as they can be trashed. Again, and I hope my subs don't take this the wrong way, but Jay Williams is a great point. When I was making all these videos, everybody was either on my side or against me. Now the man came out and said he was on drugs. You know, proved Lance right in a lot of ways. We'll talk about that too. And I have so many people coming to me. You're right. Fuck him. You were right the whole time, Baba. The man is going to jail for seven months. And it doesn't matter how he admitted it, but he says he has a drug problem. Now is when you guys choose to attack him. So when he was going strong, it was the race car. But as soon as the race car crashes, that's it. Now you're on my side. Think about it. If you don't wish Jay Williams anything but the best... I don't know what to say. And when I say that, I don't even have a problem with them. But it's in a disagreement that somehow turns into a problem. Everybody defended him and said he wasn't lying about anything the whole time. Wasn't lying. Then he comes clean about the whole Tony Stoney and who he really brought to meet him. And people say, okay, he was just lying about that. Okay, he was just lying about that. Then they bring... He admits he was doing drugs, and God bless him, I hope he's clean. And everybody says, oh, but he's just lying about that. Then a couple stories that he told that happened to be told by other people, he just lied about. You see where I'm going with this? Every time Jay decides to release something, everybody says, yeah, but that, that was it. He's done. So, you know, everybody says, if you're a liar, you're a liar, right? So that's my problem. And again, none of this shit should actually exist. It should just be Jay telling his stories and... You know, doing what he wants, getting the subs who want to listen to him, and that should be that. And I was part of that problem. But on the other side of that coin, you got Lance. And if you don't wish Lance the best, I don't know what to say. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Lance can say a lot of stuff about, about a lot of stuff. And everybody on YouTube thinks that it's a threat. Oh, he's threatened, just do it, drop it. It's, a, it's not a threat. It's not a threat if it's not going to happen. When I say I know a lot of stuff and Lance knows a lot of stuff... That's not saying, oh, we're threatening you. It's just saying how we are. You think we exposed. No, Lance got mad and said something. If you were a drug addict and admitted it, and one of your best friends was doing drugs and lying about it, making fun of you, wouldn't you be like, yo, bro, you do drugs too? That's all he did. And at the time, you guys hated him for it. But now it comes out that he did do it. But now, this is the part I don't like, and it's not about Jay at all. It's about everybody connected to Jay. You guys all know the truth. You knew the entire truth the entire time. And as he lets things out, you say, oh, well, he that part's true. And I get it. 
I'm not a regular YouTuber. That's your boy. You got to protect him. Do what's right. But don't be out here exposing other people when you would expose him. You know? And I'm talking to somebody who knows I'm wrong. And it's not like I just said this today. Today I found out I was... I've been saying it for probably three weeks now. I raised videos weeks ago. I just got tired of it. I didn't go to bed at night feeling good that I was going after somebody that has enough of their own real life problems that was an ex-con who's doing great in life right now. It's not me. I got caught up in the whole motion of it. But that's all I really got to say, you know. With all that being said, I want you guys to watch the Lance interview now, but know this. I might make an occasional video. I'm going to make an occasional video. But there will be no more mass attacks on people. There'll be no more 5, 10, 15 videos. That shit is crazy, and I don't want to do it. If you also noticed, I went to comedy, so ride with me or don't ride with me. But bigger, in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be doing a live once a week. If you remember my lives, we talked about life, addiction, work, hustle, you know, growing up in the 90s, just laughed our asses off and had fun. That's what I want to go back to on my lives, because that's what I enjoy. Even if there's five people in the chat, that is what I enjoy. So if I'm going to be on YouTube, I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I don't need five, 10,000 views on videos and have to be mad and fight about it for three weeks. I rather watch TV. I'd rather have a hustle. I'd rather be investing money. I'd rather be watching stocks go up and down. That's what I'd rather be doing than arguing on YouTube. So I'm gonna do my lives. I'll do my occasional video here and there all comical when it's needed i'm not just gonna pull people out i'm not gonna go after jay because that's the right thing to do right now to get subs and i'm not gonna do this i'm not i'm not following any lines and i might even wind up leaving if i don't like doing that but there's a lot of subscribers out there that we became almost friends we talk all the time and that's what's been keeping me here so the only way to have that without the bullshit is to just do the lives have fun make a couple videos to make people laugh but I'm not trying to hurt nobody. I'm not at all trying to make fucking money on YouTube or be a giant YouTuber. I'm past that point. Another reason why I give Plug credit. Plug's a lot younger. He's, a, I think, a decade younger than me. He has that whole decade to do his thing. How am I going to look in ten, in five years, you know, talking prison stories and calling people out? It's just stupid. I wish him the best. And you know what? They do great interviews. They interview that JD Delay on the other night. Go check that out. And they do good stuff. So take the good with the bad and watch what you want. But that's my plan. Enough with just going after people. I want to see everybody win. Everybody. I know everybody. Oh, that's not true. That's, no, it is true. I don't even understand how people, when you guys don't like each other, how you start hating on each other in that way. Because if I hate you, what does it matter if you're winning to me? If anything, you'll be less annoying. I want to see you win. I want to see everybody do well. I did something the other day. I put up a post showing a bank statement because I wanted to see how many people are only around when you're doing bad. If you're doing good, now you become something to poke at, something to make fun of. Unless it's your friend who's doing good, then he's a superstar. Tony Stoney once said, the good old Tony Stoney once said, Rules for thee and not for he, or rules for he and not for thee. And that is YouTube summed up. It's okay to do it to everybody else, but if it's done to you or your boys, it's all out of line. It's okay to go after this person and that person about what they said, but you won't go after your own friends. It just is what it is. And I get it and I understand it. And if that's what you like, stay to it. Like I said, New Age Plug is going to have a lot of good stuff. Go watch his interviews. Go check that out. If you like the arguments and the drama, then go check that out. But that's not all he's about. I think he's trying to get past that even himself. He'll always be a drama channel, but I think he's getting more into the interviews. He's realizing he's really good at it. So I do want to see where he goes. Before I go, I'll even make one last point. Blue Collar Vet. I know I said Yahoo is king, but he's another one. Here's a veteran, somebody who fought for this country, who... He's done some bad stuff on YouTube, but it was joking, funny, laughing. He wants to make content about the military. He wants to bring on, you know, vets just like himself and interview him and talk to him. But he can't even do that because people will dox the people he talks to and rip apart their lives. So YouTubers now don't want a veteran to be able to tell veteran war stories 
without destroying his life, without calling his grandma, trying to ruin his job, calling his girlfriend. He's a veteran who's trying to bring veterans onto his show. And because he stuck up for himself a couple times, he's blackballed. Anything he says about somebody else is a lie, but anything said about him, gotta be the truth, right? You guys can see it for yourself and make your own decisions. Nothing but love to anybody. And enough listening to me talk. Let's see what Big Lance from Off the Yard's up to. Everybody, have a great night. So what's, what's going on, man? I'll start it off very, very simple. Uh, we've been talking right. over a couple months. You've been telling me you were pissing blood. You thought you had a problem. I kind of kept it off YouTube because everybody just likes to trash talk. And we didn't know. You just knew you were pissing blood. But yeah. exactly what's going on. Well, yeah, I've been, I've been pissing blood for shit, eight months, right? And I thought it was the ice. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, the ice, because a lot of people that happens to it. Um, so when I, uh, it would go away a little bit, come back to them. So then people were like, it might be a, a UTI. And I said, well, maybe, maybe I could have just got a UTI and didn't treat it. Um, but it persisted, man. And then the pain started. And one night I was at my chick's house, man. and I come out and I was like, I would hide it pretty well usually, but I guess she saw it. Like I turned pale, it was sweaty, and it was like, it was bad, dude. I'd gotten down, shrunk down to nothing, man, like for a while. I was down like 170 pounds. Um, and so it was, whatever it was was eating me up. And uh, I went to the hospital that night. It was St. Patty's. I went to the hospital. Uh, and they, they, did a, uh, they did some blood work, they did a CAT scan, all these things. Well, I waited for like four hours in this place, man. We were down there, down south. So I left. I'm like, man, F it, right? So I go down there. The next morning, a lady called me. She's like, hey, were you here last night getting treated? I said, yeah. She goes, you need to come back. I said, why is that? She was like, you just need to come back. I said, okay. Long story short, she told me about to have a mask. Like, she's like, you need to go get that checked out by the urologist. I'm going to give you a referral. So when so on, I went to the urologist. Um, great guy, Dr. Becker from Fredericksburg. And he was like, yes, you have a mask. Now, we don't, and, and let's just specify, okay, because I, I said something in the video yesterday and it's gonna, they're gonna take it and run with it. What I was told by this doctor was that whether it's benign or malignant, it is called cancer. I said, okay, cool. So that's what I said, right? That's not the case. We don't know yet, okay? All we know is he's going to take a tube or a hammer, or a scraper, and they're gonna go up in there, see what they can do. They're hoping that it has not passed the bladder wall. If it's passed the bladder wall, he said, it's been so long, honestly, if that's what the case, you're probably fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just be, be I, I step back, like I said, my dad had an issue, and at the time, it's kind of horrible they do that. They said the same thing, well, it's cancer. We all thought he had cancer, then it wasn't cancer. They're like, oh, it was just a tumor. Now, if you anybody wants to look it up and do their homework, when it's on your bladder, there's a very good chance it's it's cancer. And if it's not, God bless. And but still, you're gonna deal with you're gonna have to deal with I'm guessing a catheter. You're gonna deal with a hell for the next couple months, no matter what it is. Yeah, it's they're, they're, yeah, it's it's gonna be pretty rough, man. Like it's like I'm gonna piss it in a bag. Um, now I also have stage two uh, of kidney disease. So what that basically means is that my kidneys are not functioning the right way. Um, but that could also be because I have blood clots. So there's a lot of things, man. I also have a partially collapsed lung. <laughs> Listen, um, I have yeah. the issues. The kidney issues are scary, bro, but I've got through it. Uh, if you straighten your health out, kidneys, bro, kid, do you know a kidney is the only organ in your body that can grow back? Your kidneys can literally reform themselves. When somebody donates a kidney, that kidney will grow back within six months. That's fucking crazy. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's why kidneys are so dime a dozen. You can just go do what you got to do if you got to donate to somebody and it will grow back. It's, it's That's cool as shit, man. I didn't know that. Yeah, pretty amazing. Learn something every day. So when are you going in for surgery? Two days. Two days. How long are you going to be in the hospital? Uh, that day. I'll be out. I should get out that day. Um, and, it's, you know, as long as everything goes well. And uh, my girl will be driving me home. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited. We're ready for it to be gone. You know, and for this chapter to be over with. How, how is Bryce dealing? Bryce doesn't know everything. Um, 
Bryce is in a facility. So he's got, and he's been there for about a month. Um, and he's, I want him to focus on him. So when I talk to him, he knows I got something going on. He knew he was dealing with it for a while. Yeah. He wanted me to go to the doctor a long time ago. I remember you went. Yeah, we talked one day while you were in the doctor. He said, yeah. Me. He, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a thing, dude. He, he's the type of dude, like, we're so tight, me and him, that he'll, he'll, it'll, and I'm telling you a lot of this stuff, like, when they, when Bryce is, was gone, the, the, within the seconds of him not being there, it was like my soul got ripped in half, bro. It, it, it has crushed me. And, and, you know, I don't want to divulge a lot, but I mean, just keeping it real, man, like, no parent is perfect. Nobody is perfect. I have made a ton of mistakes as a as a human being, much less a, a father. But one thing that boy knows, and he told these people, he's like, my dad has never ever made me feel not loved. Bro, my dad has crazy. always put food on a table for me to eat. He's always had clothes for me, no matter how he got it. Because he said, I remember when he went to your office because he took me with him and you guys didn't want to help him. You didn't want to give him any help. So now he did what he had to do. And, you know, there could have been better decisions made. There could have been this, that. But you know what? That boy has got so much heart and talent, and it doesn't matter, you know, what happened. What matters is he's okay. And that, Fancy. you know, you change who you are. Most cases, the father would have took off. That's just honest truth. In your position, I don't got time for a kid, and you – did the best you can to keep your son and your, you guys, are, you, listen, how can I put it? You might not be the best father because you don't know how, but you're his best friend. You do the best you can by you, which I don't give a fuck what anybody else says. People can, should tell their own stories before they start jumping down your throat. How much easier it would be for you by yourself, but you were willing to take this and do this. Even now, bro, you've told me on the side a couple times that he, he as much as I can see, it hurts you not to have him, that he's in a better place. He's working on him. You're going to work on you. And then you guys get back together. I said, he said, I called, you know, I talked to Bryce on the phone. That's what I'm allowed to do <laughs> when they feel like calling me because they have to listen to all our phone calls. Um, it's, it's, I told him yesterday, I said, buddy, at, at the end of the day, they can't keep you forever. You're going to be 18 in a year. So he said, a year. I said, that's the mean you're going to be in that place for a year, bro. I said, what it means is that it does not matter. I said, it's, it's one of these songs I'm getting ready to drop. There's, I say in the song, there's, I'm talking to him in the song, and I says, they have not made a prison, a facility, or any wall or fence that's ever going to keep me and you apart. And he said, but I feel so alone. I said, I said, every time you feel alone, I want you to touch your heart, bro. I'm right there. You're part of me, dog. I'm part of you. So when I, when I miss you, I touch my heart. I said, and that's where you sit every day, bro, until you come back. You know, and it's, this is what it is. And he, listen, and he's he, young. He don't, he, how can I put it? He has street smarts, but not smarts in other ways. He's, he really should realize that he's kind of doing this for you. Because right now, he's getting those few things that you couldn't give him. He's getting those few things that you never wished for him, that you, that you have. The things that are wrong with you that you never wished for your son, he's now getting those things. I know. So it's a bittersweet thing, bro. It really it really is. long as you meet up again, maybe this is for better. Even for your health, bro. Who knows if he was out, if you'd be dealing with this right now. Maybe this is... I mean, good. think about it like this. I'm going to be laid up. In a couple of days, you know, and, and like, you know, I'm, I'm going to put this out there too, man. Uh, you know, I have not lived inside the bounds of the law for a long time. Uh, people always go, you need a job. You need a job. Yeah, I had a job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and that job no longer exists in my life. And I could not do that. You know, you hear a lot of people say, I've done this while I had to. And people clown them. You didn't have to. You didn't have to. Well, sometimes it just, that's the only thing you got. Oh, listen, bro, I, I hate to stop you again, but the state won't help you because of your fucking, your ties with fucking organized crime, whatever it is. And then what are you going to go do? Make $12 an hour, bro? That's not going to help you. It's not. No, it's a hindrance. One way for you, without the state helping you, they are forcing you to do whatever you have to do. It's well, that's how they keep the recidivism rate right up. <laughs> you know? Bro, it's a twisted circle because if they did, if they helped you, you wouldn't have to do it. But since they don't help you, they make you a criminal. Like they're like, no, nah, we're not gonna help you, but you can go raise your son on twelve dollars an hour because yeah. you don't have the tools because we put you in the system your whole life.
Not, not only that, but, and they've been doing this, and this is what I, I tell people all the time too, and I get flack for it because they call me a race traitor. I grew up in black neighborhoods, man, right? Or, or po poverty stricken neighborhoods, let's call it that. People say it's black neighborhoods, that's not the truth. The truth of the matter is poverty has no, no, no color scheme. Poverty will give you out what you want, right? So the way, they, the way that I've always seen them do it is they'll lock the dad up, right? The mom is stuck on her own, making a lower wage because she's a woman. Then they say, we're not going to help. We're not, they, they, they dangle in front of them like a carrot, and then they finally give them a little assistance. But the only way you can keep that assistance is if you keep the felon dad out of the picture. So now you have a bunch of young kids who are getting brought up by their moms, just like I was, and the mom has to be everything because the kid doesn't want dad around. There's even another step in that, though, and it's twisted. But the woman then learns that for each kid, the state's going to help me if the father's not in the picture. Now they have four babies, daddies that aren't in the picture because they get a check for each kid. And it, it's fucked up. But it's, listen, that's their way to live. That's all they know to live. It's that's how, hey, look, it's a hustle, bro. It's a hustle. And it beats laying on your back for money. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of women do that. You know, and, and I want to say this too, that like, I believe in karmic debt. I've always said this in my videos. When I decided that that's the job that I was going to do, when I was going to be a parasite on this planet, and feed off of the misery and capitalize off of it. I'm gonna tell you, I knew all along that eventually it would, it would, it would catch up to me. And this, I believe, is the universe's way of saying, "Okay, either stop, or I'm gonna take you up out of here." So I, I do believe that because I, ever since I have stopped that, and I haven't. That was what I. I mean, with Bryce being not there, I don't have to make as much money. I don't have to make sure I feed him. Cause I would go days without eating to make sure he eats. Yeah, you I've done that many times. You couldn't lay down and fucking recover. You never, never would have happened, bro. You gotta keep going, gotta keep going. So with him there where he's at, I know he's safe. Yeah. I'm not as stressed out. Um, you can I, worry I, about I, you now. Cause bro, let's face it. You've been talking about, and I've been trying to tell you to go to the doctor for a long time, bro. On and off of you. It's just bad, it's bad news. And the fact that you're finally doing it, I don't only think has to do with the fact, oh, I finally started pissing worse blood. No, it's the fact that you're by yourself now and you can handle you. Yeah, I can do this. And, and like people would always say, well, how come you're not working? And how come, because I was you know, living in a truck with a child and I don't give a shit about what I'm going to make in two weeks. That is way, that, that might as well be two years. Two weeks when you're homeless and scrambling. And I think that I've taught Bryce how to live in survival mode. I don't want him to be like that. And it's, it's how I've lived for 40 plus years, man. I've been on survival mode for a long but time. Once again, what is $15 going to do if you don't have state help, bro? You, you're going to put food in his mouth and not be able to put a roof over his head. It's not going to do anything. For, it's really not. You don't have choices. I know everybody's going to yell at all. Oh, you always have choices. Yeah, you have choices. You get help from people. Nobody's helping you, bro. Yeah. You get choices. Yeah, you can starve to death or not. Which I do think on, a, on another note, and this is something we talk about off YouTube. I know you told me that you keep hitting the wall with uh, anytime you try to get help, but I'm thinking if maybe we get you some type of lawyer or something to find out about state aid, that they got to do something. Well, check this out. It took me four years, but I just got food stamps. Did you really? They gave it to me. Yep, I did. You know, and it's I, it, I'm, it's a blessing. Oh yeah. my god, and I am so thankful. And I just I, I you can trade you know, trade them for meth now. Huh? You can trade yeah, them. Yeah, do I do I do. <laughs> <laughs> 50 cent on the dollar, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, they're going to take that and run with that one, dog. <laughs> I, bro, I, I don't care because they know where I stand with you at this point, bro. Listen. Hey, listen, let me tell you something, man. I'm eating, bro. Believe that. <laughs> yeah, nah, bro. Listen, I, 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 they know where I stand with you. Bottom line is, I wasn't around when you had your whole age where they said you were lying. You've been nothing but honest to me. Even there's yeah. been things we've talked about in the background that you didn't want on YouTube, but you're still being honest to me. You're not lying to anybody. You just don't want it on YouTube. Any question I asked you, you gave me the truth. Any anything we talked about, you said, yeah, I did do that. I fucked up. I'm trying to come clean now. Even and listen, we gotta get into it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go over my half of this briefly. Even the Jay thing, you came out. First of all, you said nothing, and you had a ton of stuff. You still have a ton of stuff. Finally, you got mad. You said your piece, whatever it was. Everybody said you're a liar. Now he comes out and admits to part of it, but it's all bullshit. He's saying he's prescribed medicine, but he had it in a cigarette cellophane and or whatever. But it's still, he admitted it. But why isn't nobody being like, oh, Lance was right? Instead, they're saying, oh, well, 
he was right. He lied about everything else. <laughs> now, <laughs> now he told part of the truth, but the rest is lies. And I'm going to make this clear. I've been kind of supporting Jay lately because, listen, he's going to jail. And I don't wish that on nobody to leave their kid. It's not that I agree with the man. I'm looking at YouTube a little bit differently lately. I put out so many bad videos. I don't want to keep stepping on the same person. I don't want to hurt his hustle. I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to make it like I'm a creepy dude going after him. He, he said he's an addict. Let him get fixed. Let him get help. I wish he didn't have to go to jail. But still, he's still out there poking the finger, poking people and lying and doing his... I'm never going to say he's not. Look, bro, he told... He introduced Tony Tony to his side chick as it was his wife. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> on a side note, on a side hey, Tony Tony... I'm sorry, wait, wait. Yes, oh, Tony put out that video yesterday. I didn't get to see it, but you said he was being nice to you. Uh... No, you he's know, being nice to me in my life. Well, I just no, seen the video, but he's being oh, he, 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 cool. Bro, they're always going to have those questions about you, but I truly believe, with at least with Stony Tony and a couple of the other guys, that if they know for a fact this is really going on with you, bro, they got nothing but love. They're not dirtbags. There's people no, out there to see you really, really hurt, bro. And this is why I can't stand YouTube anymore. Is there's really people who want to see you hurt and be sick. Yeah. Those guys will... they'll poke the band when it's all fun, but I don't think Stony Tony has anything but good wishes for you, bro. That's an honor. I think deep down he does. I think deep down, Stony, he, the thing with him is that this, okay, one of the reasons why people think I lie a lot, right? I think that they look at what I say and the things I say, I mean, as like, this, there's no way that dude has been through this. There's no way that's happened. All that's not happened to that guy. He's not a victim of fucking all this bad shit. Well, I don't go on YouTube and make a video in the in the in the the aspect of trying to make people believe that. I tell the story, I tell the end result because I'm trying to. I, I generally when I started this, bro, I wanted to help people, man. I got a letter the other day, or I got. I, as a matter of fact, when I made the video yesterday, which is doing great, over five thousand views. That's beautiful. Um, if I take anything from this experience of being on YouTube, I have saved every thoughtful message. I've got a file. My phone, where I saved each message that these per people have sent me. This guy said, he was like, I'm in tears while I write this. How dare they try to take you out of here? Something like that. He said, you saved my life four years ago, and I've watched your channel every day since. He I've said, had you're my bro, and I love you. Oh, when I was going after you, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is, listen, people are going to hate, but there was five or six people who told me just that, and I'm like, well... If these haters hate, but he saved a couple people along the way, who the fuck am I to say anything about it? And you never lied to me. I mean, listen, bro, people on YouTube like to take the word lie and twist it. If you don't say certain things or if you don't want to put out certain things about your life, you're now a liar. If you there's stories that I can tell, but I can't tell all the story because I gotta bring yeah. it. So you're a liar. And it just bullshit. Yeah. Like, even when I came on YouTube, I came out to drop a video on Jay because I didn't like what he was doing. And then I got caught up in the wave and I was an asshole in the beginning, bro. I was. And that's the reason I'm right now. Everybody says, oh, you're playing chess. That's how you get subs. If I started attacking Jay now that everything I said was right, I would get thousands. Everybody's asking me to do it, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to see the guy get hurt. I hope I'll say this. I'll oh. say this too, as far as just to have just a. Just kind of reiterate, months ago when you and I started talking, I put my faith when you said to me, look, but we, you know, if you don't want to say it, but boom. And I did that, and you have held true to your word, bro. If you were really cloud chasing, there are things that we've talked about. You could have been got a mountain of subs on. You could have done all that, bro, because I've told you some stuff. Ever, bro. Actually, I slipped once about something. I forgot what it was, and I felt like shit. It was nothing big. I felt like yeah. shit. Even with Bryce. I didn't say a word about you, bro. I, I, I'm not like that. If you're going to tell me something in real life, I will never stab you in the back. Even if I, I believe that, bro. I believe that 100%. I want everyone else to know that, too, because, like I said, there could have been. And I've been, look, I know a lot about a lot of people, bro. I could, I could oh, bro, even, a hey, bro, you've told me things about Jay. This is why <laughs> I'm mad at other people. Because when they're like, oh, Lance is just talking. No, Lance could explode Jay's whole fucking life. But he doesn't do it. He let out a little bit because he was pissed. And I don't say a word because he asked me not to. But I know, and I'm sure you know even more than you told me. And more than you have. But I just wouldn't never do it to him or you. Like, if we talk in real like, life, oh, I consider you a friend. I'll say it on you. I don't give a fuck. Me too. Same here. Absolutely. I mean, we're friends, dude. Like, when I say him, that's my friend. That's my friend. And Jay, 
I love Jay. Don't get me wrong. I said some mean shit to him because I was pissed. But yeah, that was my, one real of my best friend for a long time. Lance, you, know, and, you were a real friend to him, bro. You weren't a yes man. You told, I even feel what I said to him in the beginning. Can't, listen, I came out like a dick, but I wanted him to see it and maybe change some things. You weren't a yes man. You told him, listen, bro, you got a fucking problem. Admit it. Don't admit it, but fucking fix it because it's going to destroy you. And it destroyed me. The maddest is that he sat there and watched me go down that road. You know, and, and God bless the man because he helped me out. He did help me a lot. You know, there were rumors I stole his tools. I didn't never steal one thing from that dude. Never once. Did I steal from Jay Williams. I, I promise you. Yeah, that. Yeah. I didn't have to. Before, I'm going to let I you go, but to make it clear, because I just want to end it and I'll let you talk. I yeah. have no problem, bro. I don't want to see the guy go to jail. I'm going to try to keep his name alive as much as I can when he's gone. I'll do whatever I can. I hope he takes off. But I would like to see the ego stop. And that's that's a real person. That's what a friend would say to him. A friend would tell him, bro, you got to get this shit in check. If you if you think about it like this, and, and, and like when I was really out there, like space cadet, bro, he'll tell you himself. I mean, space cadet, talking to the bush monkeys in the woods that weren't there. You know, I, I was chasing people that weren't there, bro. And it was it like, I look back on that, like, what the fuck? But there were times where Jay Williams would, would make sure I was okay. He was a real friend to me too. And he told me shit I didn't want to hear because he was a real friend. But when the time came for me to tell him, and I said to him, I said, look, man, just because I ain't got a mansion in a Hummer don't mean that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, dog. You know what I'm saying? Think back six months ago, brother, and remember what I look like. That's how you look now. I said, and I'm only telling you this dude because I'm a brother and I love you. If you can't accept that or that hurts your little feelings, whatever, dog. You know, it is, it is what it is. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out of this relationship or this friendship knowing I did the best I could. As a friend. Right? Bro, even me and you, I feel like that's almost why we became friends is because you've said shit to me and I've said shit to you and we accept it. We don't, you know, we don't beat around the bush it's not all oh, you talk bad about me it's not bro i'm saying this because i care about you like yeah, bro because you care about it <laughs> and if you want I'll, I'll be so if you wanted to hurt jay you could saying that oh he did drugs and this and that was you he said something to you and you said something back you could say a lot but you don't bro you wish you do wish the guy the best and i fully I believe i right. do man i love jay i still love jay just because you fight with somebody don't mean you don't love him no more you know how many times and this people people who listen to this video Think about this. How many times have you and your wife or your girlfriend said, you know, fuck you, I hate you. But you do, you don't, know, right? So it's the same type of thing. Well, it's at least now that he came clean about the drugs, bro, you think he'd call you up and be like, yo, bro, what you said to me, you were right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, he, he did call me. I've talked to Jay once or twice since this whole thing happened. A lot of people know that. And we we talked for about 30 seconds before the yellow started. And he, he still, in my, his opinion, and that's fine, thinks that I did that for malicious reasons. And I said, bro, there's a lot of shit I could have done for malicious reasons, Jay. I said, you know, and he's like, well, I think we should, I think we should meet face to face and, and fight. I said, you want to fight? I said, so now, not only are you going to get, you know, all these things happening to you, you did your, now you're going to get punched in your face. I said, I'm not going to do that. I love you, brother. I don't want to fist fight you. Even you if know? he, bro, let's say he even won. He, bro, listen, I'm going to say something. J.D. DeLay told the story the other night. Uh, Jay was supposed to go on Ian Bick. Ian Bick had told him, I'm going to put you up in a hotel room. And Jay told Ian Bick, that's not going to happen. I tuck my son in every single night. That's my program. I got to be home to do that. And right there, I was like, that's the real Jay. Why don't we hear more about that Jay? Like, I'd I love to tell more about that. I know a lot about that Jay. You know, like, that's what he should be worried about, not fighting you. <laughs> he doesn't want to fight me. Now, at the end of the day, I, I mean, I'm sure he does. And I'm not saying Jay's soft because Jay is not soft. Right? I don't think so at all. Um, but it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a level of, of respect in life that I feel Jay has got to learn. And that means when I say love, respect, I don't mean like as far as respecting that there's a there's an alpha male pecking order or whatever, dog. The, the respect is respect your friends that tell you about yourself because that took a lot for them to do. I never tell them about himself. I could say, keep on going. I get know. it in. Let me get. Let me see if I can get out of this situation, right? But when you care about somebody and you see them dying or killing themselves, you don't want to see that. And I did it for my own game too, because I love the man. That's, and I always got love for Jay, whether he hates me or not. We could, if we were to meet right now, I'd shake his hand, give him a hug, and tell him I love. Him. I'm Which not gonna fight. Is he is, bro? I would probably do the same thing. I would, but the only thing I would tell him is the same thing I'd tell all my friends, bro. Be humble. 
like worry about you and your family. Stop with the bullshit. Nobody cares because it's really coming down to it. It hurt his life, bro. If he would have listened to me from day one, he might have not went to jail. You know, but he listens to all these guys who are, oh, you're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Everything you do is okay. And now look where he is. bro. Because no the guy. higher he'd get, the more money he'd give him. Correct. And I don't wish this. He's got to go to jail for seven months. That's seven months of not tucking his kid in. That's horrible, bro. People think, and then people are asking me, you should do more videos. You are right. I'm not doing any more videos. I'm not going to bash a man who's in jail. It's not going to fucking happen. I hope he comes back and I, listen, he can do a lot of good things. He can be like JD and go out this way and go out that way. And I hope he does that and branches off and stops with all the prison content. But who knows? That's what I'm doing. I'm, 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 I might do one or two here and there just to keep the, the analytics and stuff going right, but at the end of the day, bro, like I'm so much more. There's so much more going on in my life other than prison. I'm just now. I, I feel like I'm just a person on YouTube. You know what I mean? I don't have to be subjected to a genre. You know, yeah, we get along, bro. You don't want. And how can I put it? You've always left your ego at the door. You say I'm an addict. You say this. He, you say that. So how am I gonna beat on a man who's telling me, "Hey, Lance, you're a meth addict." Yes, I am. Where where do yeah. I go from there? <laughs> I was like, I remember I called you. I was like, hey, I'm not a crackhead, by the way, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we, like had, <laughs> we had our problems. Like, I, tell you, buddy, I don't take down the videos. You were the other one. Bro, all my videos, sometimes I crossed the line and you said it, but you were the only person that right off the bat was like, yo, I'm sitting here with fucking heroin, Heather laughing our balls off at your video. <laughs> so it's like, wow, the guy, he's, he's humble. He doesn't think he's bigger <laughs> than that with bullshit. I still think it's weird, like when I'm in like a, a gas station or a supermarket, and people run up trying to get your autograph or take pictures with you, man. Like it's really, it's really cool, and it's obviously, you know, obviously not famous, but it's neat. It's a neat experience. It's cool. I was with with Bryce one morning, and we're getting coffee, getting ready to go to work, whatever. And I was gonna drop him off at his friend's house, and his dudes behind us was like, they were, they just, they just right. And Bryce turned around, and he was like, oh my god, it's Bryce, and like it was so cool to see his reaction, and like. Just you know, feel like like him. You know what I mean? Like it was just it was cool. And those are the types of things that. But the, there's nothing better, bro, than when the people tell you that you changed their lives. Forget everything else. Forget about the cool times you're sitting there in the automatic or picture or the money or whatever. But there's been times on YouTube where I was banking bank, dog. My first couple, like my first year, dude, I was making almost ten grand a month. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? But obviously, I barely make three hundred dollars a month right now because my videos just aren't doing that. Because from either, because bro, once you cut the bullshit, it starts dying off. It does. Well, that, uh, not so much that it's uh, my channel's dying. Everybody, because I haven't posted videos, because I'm not gonna go after people for no reason, bro. It's not my channel's not dying. I still have, considering how YouTube works, I have almost three thousand subs in a matter of five or six months. But I haven't posted any videos. I'm not going to. If I wanted to go after Jay right now, I would fucking probably have another three thousand subs. But I don't give a shit, bro. This this is not real life. It's YouTube. Those aren't real subs, though, to me, right? The way I look at this, is like, yeah, dude, I know a lot about a lot of YouTubers, bro. I could be the YouTuber troll guy. But first of all, I don't like it. I don't like. I feel like when you just promote negative, you get negative. So you yes, know, you know, it's just what it is. You know, I, I believe in I believe in, in consciousness, and I believe that we all, you know, we are going to exist on the plane that we create. You know, we're all energy. We're all energy based, and the energy you put out is what you're going to get back. And the thoughts that you're having, what you're gonna manifest. So I'm not gonna think about this other guy because then what am I doing? Giving him more energy. I'm gonna think about me, mine, and my circle, and that's all we need to think about. Well, listen, so, bro. I got into it. We were just talking about this. I did it too, and I'm learning. <laughs> Tony, Tony told me when I came out, you're gonna learn, boy. And he's right. I changed in so many ways, bro. Like I said, I called out. Plug. But he has it. <laughs> Me and Plug are right. I, bro, I respect the Plug. You know, I know you don't watch the streets anymore, but last night there was a full out war and he didn't talk shit to anybody. He just kept things in line. Plug does well. But I'm going to ask you a question since you don't watch them. There's um, this guy I asked you before, you don't know him, DVS. So we're going to ask you a question. Have you ever heard of somebody who, let's say, is a crip, drop their set, become a Latin king, or vice versa, and then have the other gang? You pound them, you know, like dap them up and be like, oh, I'm glad you're doing good as a Latin king now after he dropped his set as a crip and became a Latin king. I have definitely seen that, and it's comical. I've had guys in my organization do that, and I had one guy, this dude, man, uh, I'm not going to say his name. I should say his name. He's a punk. But he, originally when I met him, was in, was a uh, a Simon City Royal, right? 
this is a gang out of like Missouri or something. And like, they like hang out with the GDs with this bunch of white boys. They're kind of like, I don't know, drug addict clowns to me, but, uh, he's in Virginia. There's no Simon city Royals out here. You know what I'm saying? So then it became like a, a GD. Then he was in like the ABs. And then one of my boys put him down with us. And this dude had tattooed all these gangs on his head. I said, I met him. And I said, what do you got all the neighborhoods on your head for, dog? I was like, what do you? <laughs> it's like, jack all trades, ain't you? He's like, no, man. I just, I said, no, you're, you're a follower is what you are. And I said, you don't, you're not going to be a good part of this organization because I don't want followers. I want men. I want guys who are going to be free thinkers. I don't think that that's you. I think that you are going to walk dead into a, a, like, right into a snag and walk me right there with you. I said, so I, I do not condone. Oh, wow. But still, I mean, Bro, what you just said is going to definitely raise some balls over there because that's a great point. You Most of them are saying you can't set jump. You're saying you can't but you're bringing up a great point that nobody's going to respect it. You're never going to be respected after you start set jumping and then claim, right. claiming that. You can always get another game because they need send-offs. I've used yeah. you, need, you need you need you have assets and you have liability. You need crash. Yeah. So anybody that was like an, an organization that was like strung out on drugs or anything like that or just a liability, I'll keep them in there, but they will be the first on the list to do hits because yes. I can lose them. I'm asking you, know? you this because I don't know. I'll make it clear with him too. I don't know gang politics, bro. I'm from New York, but I was never we have MS 13, that's what runs shit over here, and that's it. Yeah, so the way I would the way I would do things is you know, you know, I would have can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I got people. I turned off my notifications, but it keeps on ringing. Um, so I, you look at like war is expensive for any game. You know, if you go to war with another organization, what's going to happen is you're going to lose good guys. Whatever money you had on the yard, you're going to you lose that in the streets, whatever. Then on top of it, you're looking at another case that's attorney fees. That's a lot of loss for what? You know, my guys spend a lot of time beating each other up. They would come to the fence with. Oh, well, he did this or he did that to me. And now I'm in my bag about it. I said, this is what we're going to do, guys. There's a no hands on policy. anyway. Just, if you get in a fight, it better be a knife. It better be worth you dying and killing your brother over. Or do not bring that bullshit to this fence. I said, if you bring a problem, you better bring at least two solutions. I'm tired of hearing your problems. Come to me with some fucking solutions. So they would, I, would make them, I would make them read books and just like Think and Grow Rich and 48 Laws just to put them into an activity that was something other than bang, bang, shoot them up, let's go stab and do this. Because all you're thinking like now is a savage. And if you do have people who think like that, that's all they're ever going to be. Use them accordingly. Right? That's what I did. And it was very successful. Very successful. Because he, listen, and once again, I'm not, I don't know. So I'm just saying what he said to you. His other thing was that even when he was in the gang, that he rode solo, that he basically did everything for himself. I'm like, how does that work? How are you in a gang, but you're solo? I, no, I, he's not. It's a lie. I would tell him, no, you're lying. You're not in a gang, and they should beat you up for saying that you are. And, and a lot of guys, I've seen guys who were just tattooed, I'm a crip on their fucking face, you know, or whatever. Fly, bro, fly. I think it's New York. I've seen fuck, bro. I know of plenty of people who claim crip because they made it up. Them and their friends said, we're a crip, and that yeah. was they're not real sets. There's and people all oh, in New York. You know, get, no, there's a lot of fake sets out here. That I do know. Yeah, but UBN is very, very strong out there. And that's a very powerful organization, as a matter of fact. We have UBN here, um, which is United Blood Nation or something like that. And that's where it started, uh, was New York, in the prisons of New York. And Nieta, I, I fuck with those guys up there, the Puerto Ricans, man. Those guys yeah. are... They're, they're actually big here, too. That, that's that been here for a long that's time. That's what I'm saying. Like, New York, New Jersey. Uh, I met a lot of Nietzsche. I've, I've politicked with a lot of these guys, man. Like, yeah, Nietzsche, MS-13, Latin Kings. We used to have this other one, CIC. They, that's, that, I don't think they're even around anymore. But. Like, we were, we, were, we were real tight with MS. Um, we actually tied with them down here. And that was that was a deadly combination. Because it was the only combination, right, that, that really had a chance against Bloods. Because we were so big at the time. Like we were the fastest growing organization in the state of Virginia at one point. I think we still are. And uh, by time with those guys, you added a level of savagery that was uncommon. Bro, you know, I those know guys, about are they are the most unified people I've seen. Bro, yeah. when it, like an elderly Spanish guy, if you're an elderly Spanish, they're going to protect you. They're going to make sure you yeah. can. They are, whatever people can say bad about them, they are unified. They shout have out to, to shout out to Salido. What's up, brother? You ever see this man? Big L says, "What's up, there, Salido man? That's my dude, man. He's uh up there. You know what I mean? So 
Good dude, man. Real good dude. So what's up besides besides all that good stuff? I hear you got some new music. I'm actually gonna put your video in the end of this. You said that was all right. Yes. Um, I just I'm, and just so everyone knows, like I'm doing the videos myself. I'm doing everything myself. <laughs> so I can't afford videographers. Bro, you do everything yourself, which is yeah. you know, bro, your music is good. Anybody who says it's not is either one of two things: they're a hater or they just don't like the genre. Nobody yeah. likes the genre is going to say you're not good. You are, bro. It, it, Everybody I've, I've sent it to, is, I've got another good reviews. And, and, and our genre, I guess, I don't really have, I feel like our music is like, and once Brisky gets home, man, we'll we have it really going. Um, and we're adding some new artists. So, okay, quick story on what's going on. Because I got signed, or almost got signed, to Universal Records last year. And I had the contract, right? I was getting ready to sign with these people, man. And it would have been great. I would have took off. I didn't want to sign and people say I'm crazy for this and maybe I am but a good friend of mine T9P Productions shout out to your home why uh and I have decided that we're going to start our own label and, and it, it's it's basically going to be T9 is going to be the name of it he's our producer he produces all the beats and music puts it all together um I come in here with this with the rough draft I say this is what I got you know I make the beats myself on, or whatever and then he'll look at it and like make it sound good you know and until I can really get better at it but you know, he quit. He was working with like G Unit and like TI and like he's done music with Timberland, Miss Yelly, like J. Cole. He's him. He's done shit with these people. So he walked away from that. He walked away from it, dog. To because he brought us to them and was like, look, there's something here. I want to use it and I think we take off. They were like, nah, man, that's that's white boy redneck stuff. We don't want to do it. There. And T9 was like, well, I walked in. And he did. And he's living in a fucking motel now because of it. And I love him for it. Bro, so I, I got to give him all I got. If you if your stuff could get out there, bro, it crosses boundaries is why I think it's good. Some of it is some redneck stuff, but some of it's yeah. some street stuff. Some of it's some country. Some of it's some, you literally, bro, I, I listen to your music. And I'll tell you a couple songs I heard the first time. I'm like, it was all right. Then I listened to it again. And I'm like, oh, shit, I caught that. That's good. I was listen to it again. I'm like. Oh shit, look at that too. And by the time I'm done, I'm like, yeah, that's good. Like, it's fucking really good. Like, you, it's hard to explain. You sneak some stuff in there that if you listen to it, it's fucking deep and it's real. I hate the bullshit music. I hate bullshit. That's the thing too is like, I always told Brisky, man, like, a lot of people think he's capping. Somebody said in the comments there, it's like, it'd be more believable. You talked about like what he really, they don't really have no idea, man. Like, the dude has been, he's been my right hand for a long time, man. You know what I mean? Like, he's seen and done things just for survival. Right in this life, you know, people have to understand that I was I was given the I'm gonna call it the honor and the opportunity to be his father. But I, you know, after me and Brandy broke up, it was just me and him, and there has been no like, it's like he's had to be with me, and I was living outside the bounds of the law, and, and unfortunately, that's what I had. Now he has grown up around nothing but bikers, outlaws, gang members. These are dudes that he knows. This is what he knows. He is comfortable around these people. You put him around executives or, or, or weirdos and you know what I mean he's like and I try to explain it to the people like you took him from his environment I'm not saying that the, everything we do is great but that's what he knows and you're trying to change him and they, they another thing they're trying to do which is really messed up is they're trying to get him to like divulge info on me and he told him straight up he said let me tell y'all something man he said my daddy is the only thing in my life that's ever been there every day when I needed it my dad is everything to me, and there's no way. He's like, you give me 20 years, I'm not going to tell you a goddamn thing. Send me back to my room. That's what he told him. And that's stamped by all of them. They told me that. They're like, you've already taught him well. I was like, you goddamn right I did. It's great. <laughs> you know? But some things aren't taught, right? Some things are just either ingrained in somebody or they're not. I know guys that look like fucking killers that are soft as shit. I know guys that look soft that will, that will take your face off and wipe oh. their ass with it. Say it all the time. We were just talking about it. I came on YouTube with this tough guy persona, and I put it away fast, and I'm thankful of it. I don't talk about, bro, I don't even talk about jujitsu on fucking YouTube, because I just feel like, first of all, you'll find out when you find out. Second of all, by talking shit on YouTube, it's just bullshit to me. Like, yeah. we don't do that. I never used to talk. If there was a fight, I would have talked to you on the cell phone and be like, you're a bitch. I'd wait till I see you. So why was I becoming something that I hated? Now, but now the opposite end of that is everybody attacks you because you don't talk that way. So you can't, you're fucked either way. You can't win no matter what.
The one thing you got to remember is that there is a billions of people watching to YouTube. So I don't even read the comments no more usually because, I mean, I get so much hate. But when I get that hate, I'm like, nice. That yeah, means that you're still watching. Between that hate, there's a lot of love, too, and that's what I care about. That's I am talking yesterday on a video. I said this. I said, you got to look at it like this, man. But they have talents and then things that, that are great in life, man, right? God favors you. God favors you. Okay, boom. But when God favors you, trust and believe that the devil will, too. That's kind of what this song's about, the devil song, which will be the videos dropping today. Oh, that's uh, you know, that, that's the one that I liked. That when you sent me the two, I said I was like, you told me to listen to the one, and it was actually the other one that I really liked. Yeah, the devil song, which is basically my intro for my videos, but the the rest of and we did a studio cut of it. Like this is like it was the first try. I just got there. I was like, hey, let me record devil song. I'm gonna work on a lead for it. So all the guitar parts in this song, I do all the guitar parts and. And the song, I did it, and we sat down, I sung it, and got up and left. And that's the recording of it. And that's how I like to do things, man. I don't need to sit there for 45 minutes trying to make the song. Just that, listen, I'm going to sit down and sing the song, right? And, and you hear T9 uh, in the back, and he was like, he's sitting there after, I, after I'm done. I strum a couple of chords, and he goes, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so that's really how we do things, man. But the, uh, as far as, as far as Cap lying about things, I will not put a song out there that, that is not true. Any song that I put out there, I wrote it from a memory. Uh, I'm getting ready to drop a song called Places I Call Home, where my buddy blew his brains out. I said, at the end of the verse, I said, he, I said, um, got tired of living life with his fucked up family, took the Glock 17, pulled the trigger, and boom, he left his memory splattered all over his room. That is a true story, right? And, you know, I remember 14, 15 year old girls tricking because mom and dad was showing out on drugs and the rent had to get paid. And, you know, I remember a lot of things, bro, growing up. Bro, and even even in just, not just your music, I wasn't around, and you admitted to it. You're actually the one who, and I've done it too. You said when uh, there was a time on YouTube where, yeah, you did embellish because you thought you had to. So now everybody only remembers that. Bro, everybody on YouTube embellishes. Everybody <laughs> tells stories. It's YouTube. But since I've known you, you've been on a different path. So why can't people judge you for now? Why do they judge you for yesterday and when they don't judge their own people? Fucking crazy. Because they're so worried about us, bro, because they can't. They're too scared to judge themselves, bro. They're never going to judge themselves because if they look at themselves in the mirror, the reflection they see they don't love. And the more honest I am, bro, and the better off I do out here, the more I love myself. And that was something that was very hard for me for a long time. I didn't go to the doctor because I didn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you start to give a fuck and you start to look at, like, how you're represented in the world, people say, oh, fuck, what the world? Think? Yes, you do. You completely do. But I know when me you know, are talking, I think I said it to you in our first conversation. I'm like, yo, bro, why don't you talk this way on YouTube? Like, if, you, if you're if you this guy in real life, be this guy on YouTube, this is the guy I like. I went from, literally went from hating you and bashing you, just like Jay Williams, to talking to you once and being like, yeah, nah, that's not who he really is. Like, this, he's a, he's a decent dude. I get that he even, you know, I get the cap. I get he was all torn up in it, but that's not the man he is today. No. Oh, on a total side note, just for the comical end of it, bro, did I ever challenge you to a fight ever? No. <laughs> uh, somebody's out there saying that I, oh, you were for, against him, and then you called him, bro, I never ever. <laughs> if I had to fight you, I would, but I'll be yeah. the first to say it. When it comes, bro, you grew up in the system. You're a big dude. I wouldn't want to fight you. I wouldn't call you out. If I had to, I'll fight anybody, but. I think you're a beast, bro. Like, I'll say it how it is. Why would I get out? I I get comical people, all kinds of stories are floating. Oh, he dropped. <laughs> right. No, Sorry. man, never once, you know, never once did I come out of your mouth. Never once did I come out of my mouth. Because I'm going to tell you something about people who, and this is, I think we're on the same page, with people that know true violence, know what it is, and know that they're capable of doing that, and they know that how bad it can get. They don't want it done to them either. So I don't care if it's a big guy, a small guy, whatever. I don't want to fight anybody if I don't have to. And that's just getting some sort of tournament of sport. You know, when I train, I'll train a spar when I get a, you know, a sparring partner. But out here in the streets, I don't want to hurt anybody except AZ Ruption. <laughs> but um, um, listen, I even look at it a little further that listen, I can handle my when you're gonna try to tell me you're gonna hurt me and you're gonna come to my home and hurt me, bro. It's not all about fighting anymore. I'm not a kid. I'm going to do whatever I have to yeah. do. 
So as tough as you could be, if I had to fight you, let's say, and you would do the same thing, so who knows? If you were coming to my house, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to protect myself. It's not all about toughness. Well, it's people don't see that end of it. It's almost, oh, he can swing and this guy can fight. It's not all. About, it's what you're willing to do. How far are you willing to go? And that's where I actually, I don't care who makes fun of me. I get scared at that, bro, because I don't want to. And that's somebody that's been through true violence. And that's, that's like people can say what they want. A couple of fist fights in life. You know how many fights I've been in? Probably a good four or five hundred. Do you know what I've learned on the way to four or five hundred? A lot. And you know, I've got scars. You can tell a person who's fought. I literally have scars all over my head and face. My hands are all scarred up. My knuckles are like I'm bashed in. It's just like you know, I have done that. I don't want to do that. I don't, I would much rather like have a situation with somebody that could get volatile and work it out together, like men, and show other people can be done. Well, now I'm you're, you're, like a, you're another YouTube. This is a YouTube disaster, I call it. I tell everybody this is comical. Oh, look at Lance fight on Street Beefs. I'm like, okay, so you're going to judge a man by one fight when they didn't show all the <laughs> fights he won. They only showed the fight he lost. Didn't you, And 99.9% .9 of you would never get in that ring. And they're only showing the fight he lost. You know, you don't yeah, know. Yeah, I got, I got two fights on there. I had a couple other ones. We don't, I don't even care about it anymore. No. I just, Bro. I tell people too, like, I'm not a boxer. I'm not Floyd Mayweather. I train jiu-jitsu. I wanted to box. You I want to get some energy on me. out. I tell um, them, whenever they say, do you want to box, I laugh. I'm like, you're not putting gloves on me. I'm not going to box you. It's not going to happen. No. Why am I going to put big-ass pillows on my hands for it? I want you to feel this shit. Right? So, and even, and, and I'll, I wish I could, I still had Ox's number, the guy that, that hit me. And he'll tell you, he said, man, it was one of us was going down, dog. I mean, we were throwing haymakers. And that's all we did. Like, I wasn't trained. I'm, he's actually, actually uh, going to gloves. So, yeah, man, they, no one, even Mousy Poo didn't want to fucking get near that dude. I was like, I'll fight him. I walked up to him. I said, I'm coming. To, I'm going to punch you in your face, dog. Don't be out taking it easy, dog. <laughs> like, so, Bro, but when, when I, when I got up. Ooh, ooh, you got, I, got I, wasn't even, I wasn't even all the way out. I would have been. No. Even but, if you, who cares is the point, bro. So the dude, the dude broke my ribs. I don't know. A lot of people know that my ribs are cracked. When he got me in the corner, he cracked my ribs. Ooh. That was incredibly painful. Yeah. <laughs> then my eye was split. I mean, the dude kicked my ass. But you know what? I gave him all that love him for it because it taught me something. It's not a loss. It's a lesson. Like, or, it made listen, me realize. You might even say he could have won. But, bro, take those gloves off and allow you to be able to rip at his face and do what you would do to survive in the street. And it's a different fight. That's not sure. the difference of who would have won in a street fight by any means at all. Yeah, I mean, if I, take, if I took him to the ground, he's done. That's what you I mean. Also, That's a fight. Yeah. The fight is whatever mm -hmm. goes, whatever happens, happens. These, you can't put gloves these on. These people a make me laugh, man, because I'm like, do you think you're Floyd fucking Mayweather or something? I was like, just, just, just let me tell you something. I told a dude this the other day. I said, listen, dog, this ain't the movies, bro. I was like, do you think you're going to turn them into Jackie Chan and fucking start doing it? It's not going to happen, dog. You'll get That's beat People up. think on here, bro. People watch they movies. They do, bro. <laughs> I told him it's mean that. I said it's mean. I said, come on. He called me up. And a lot of people don't know this too because he does still talk shit about me. He said to me, he called me and said, hey, bro, because it was getting close to fight time. And I was like, for real, Jay, even Jay was like, damn, let's you train. I said, I'm going to beat his ass, dog, straight up. I was heavy back, just training, getting fast. I, I put a training video out and he called me like 30 minutes after I dropped it. <laughs> and he was like, hey, look, uh, <laughs> hey, look, man, uh, you just want to go ahead and let, you know, this is just for views, right? I was like, Nah, bro. I said, I'm going to peel your wig back, bro. For real. I'm, I'm going to eat. He's like, nah, man. We're like, you know, like, <laughs> so he, he he claims it's me, but it wasn't me. I put that do, on everything. Do you have any other videos, any other fights, or is that the only fight that's videotaped? No, I got another one I got lost, too. Um, They had, uh, they put two losses up. I fought this dude named Juggalo Rob. And Juggalo Rob was 30, no, 46 and 0 when I fought him. Um, I was, this was fight number two for me, <laughs> right? And I was supposed to, I, I, I trained a little bit. This fight, I looked a lot sharper, but I was still smoking cigarettes. They put me into a sand pit. Like it was sand. And like anybody that's ever really trained or worked out, trying to do footwork in sand is impossible. Bro, that's why you run on the beach to train to fight in a ring. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get with Apollo. We didn't run the beach. I was smoking Newports and I was supposed to fight a much shorter guy. This guy's like 6'3, six, 6'4. Six, so, um, now, he never hurt me not once in this fight, but the problem was, one, I couldn't breathe uh, because I hit this guy. I'll show you. If you watch 30 seconds in the fight, I hit this guy with a three-piece. I'm going to knock most people unconscious. But he did that. I was like, 
Yeah, that's like when you, every every piece hit him. Wow, wow, boom! And I mean, I mean, his whole head like, and he comes back up, and I was like, he's got meth power. I don't know what it is, right? But uh, uh, he was undefeated. I think he's still undefeated to this day on street beefs. Him and his brother. Now I hit that man for two rounds, two rounds, knocked, and then finally, like in the second, I just let him hit me. He wasn't hurting me, bro. Uh, and you're actually glossing over a big fact. You were willing to fight a man on video that was forty something and up. How many people yeah. are willing to do that? But people look at it funny because he looks like a goofball. That doesn't mean shit. No. He, he's forty six and because he makes people tap out with the wind because you're trying to knock his big son bitch out and like you can't. Well, I, I, I talk about the wind all the time. That's all these YouTubers who think they know how to fight. I laugh because I'm like, bro, even if you have a punch, none of you have any breath whatsoever. Unless yeah. you know, people picture, like you said, Jackie Chang fighting. Bro, most fights last about 10 seconds. And if it goes over 10 seconds, the winner is the one who can breathe. Right. And I didn't, I couldn't breathe. I finally, 30 seconds to the end, I stopped. And people talk, about, you're such a lame, you're a quitter. I'm like, listen to me, man. I gave that man that fight. Do you know why I gave it to him? Because he fucking earned it. He took all them goddamn shots that I gave him. I mean, he took a good amount of shots, bro. And I said, you know what? He earns it. I didn't. You know, well, so I'll show this. I'm I'm off now, and I'll be the first to say it. my breath is not what it used to be. But bro, I see if anybody can see it. I placed in the Spartan race. I was smoking Dude. cigarettes during the race, smoking cigarettes. I was drunk the night before, and I was like number four ninety four out of like four thousand. So four ninety four, <laughs> four thousand, bro. I literally was smoking cigarettes during the race. <laughs> we were dude, what happened was I wasn't supposed to be in it. My buddy, he's a soccer player. He tore his ACL the night before. He's like, yo, you want to take my spot? I'm whacked, blown out of my mind. I'm like, yeah, I'll go. Nice. Went up there, did my <laughs> still 400 out of like 4,000 and something. <laughs> you, you know what's crazy to me too, man? Speaking about that, I get accused of being high on YouTube all the time, right? I want to say this. I have never once made a video high. I get accused of being high. I might have got high the night before, but I'm putting this on everything. I've never done a video high, and the reason is because I feel like I'm gonna look like this. You know, so I'm not gonna do that. Oh, listen, I can see when you did it the night before because you still yeah. have to it. bro. When you're tweaked, you even anybody tweaked is all over the place. Yeah, not, I would not, do the same. My tails are great. Wait, I'm, I'm like, wait, but you did get called out, bro. Somebody saw a booger in your nose. Oh, yeah. I said, this guy's so good on my dick that uh, you're seeing my boogers now, bro. I said, do better, man. I said, I said uh, go to the gym, you fat fuck. <laughs> this is the guy that swears to God that all of you two that picks on him and they bully him. And yet he brings up somebody he don't even know to show a booger in their nose. Oh, he knows me. Doves knows me because he's, he's tried this shit before with me. And I told him, I said, I'll, I'll beat you up. I said, come out here to Virginia. He's like, look, come to Montana, bro. Or wherever he's at. And I was like, homie, I'm not going to go there and voluntarily go to jail because that's what you're going to do. Well, you know that happened, right? I know. I know. Yeah, I Yahoo, went, that guy. Yahoo went there and he had the cops waiting for him. Did they lock him up? Yeah, they locked him up, bro. He was stuck in Montana. That's insane, bro. And, bro, that's let me tell you something. If you have a Yahoo, his name is Yahoo is King. In my eyes, the realest YouTuber there is. This guy should have a billion subs. Bro, he basically, he was making fun of dubs, joking around, being funny. And this guy started talking about his kids, talking about his wife, talking about his family. So he said, listen, I'm coming to you. I will come right to you. You're not going to talk about my family. Bro, he literally traveled all the way to this guy's house to walk up to him. And the guy had to... What a bitch, bro! And if Yahoo is king, bro, he's all about. He's a he's a very humble guy. He's about his religion. He went away. He found God. He's a good dude, bro. He's a family man, and he got hemmed up. He was stuck there. He had to get bail. He has to go to court now. Is he uh still in jail? Oh, he's out. No, no, he's out. He's he's, he's he was only there, I think, for like three days. But it's still, he was stuck on the other side of the fucking world, basically, for three days. So I want to promote this because I'm going to do this, and um. Oh shit! I'll Where put his name up. Everybody, sub up to Yahoo is king because that guy deserves the subs. He's the realest person on YouTube. Prove me wrong because he's the only one who ever went and tried to do something about. It. Well, no, I'm actually no, man. Uh, I'll tell you what, I did that once. You remember that? I guess you weren't around for that, huh? 
No, no, you did actually. Wow, oh. I didn't know that. I've done it. I did it with this dude. Is this uh, what is his name? Man? He's a black dude. Um, oh, what's his name? I forget his name now. But I drove to his neighborhood and I sat out his neighborhood and I said, "I'm here, dog." And um, he immediately uh, started copping deuces. And I said, "You copping deuces? You talked all that crap about I'm a child molester and all that stuff." I said, "But I'm here. I'm gonna go ahead and beat your beard off, and and, and we're gonna get this out the way." He's like, "Oh man, no, it ain't like that." I said. Okay, so then I made a video right after and I said to him, I said to the world, I said, this is what you do when this happens. If he doesn't want to fight, you don't be a bully and fight him. You've already taken, I said, I've taken his manhood, right? And I'm going to keep it in a little pocket. I said, I, I'm a good, I mean, I said, if you say you're sorry, go on national thing and say you're sorry, and I'll leave you alone, right? right. And that's, did, that's exactly what this guy did, except once he got home, the, the other dude, Dubs, turned it into, yeah, back to him i was gonna beat him up the cops i didn't call the cops bro it's a little town in montana the cops were there when he got there he he still goes back after the guy it just never ends. this is the stuff i don't even want to be involved in. so i i support um wounded veterans corporation whatever it is and um i do a lot of ptsd work for them and stuff and fundraisers these guys have just got i just got this thing man it's really pretty cool man check that thing out that is nice Decent, right? He's got a nice little, nice little case. And um, I tell you, I need to do um, – I'm going to get a little financially strapped in the next coming weeks, you know, because of this, this and that and third. And, I mean, you know, I quit doing this, you know, selling the, selling dope, and I quit doing the, everything. So I'm going to be laid up, uh, not able to move. So I'm going to do a fundraiser for myself. <laughs> Yo, I go, I'm gonna go, I'll support it. it. Bro, I will support it fully. I, I'm tired yeah. of that, too. Listen, anybody has a right for donos, whether you're rich or not. But if somebody needs it, put it out there, bro. People are going to help you. Who gives a flying fuck what anybody says? I know a lot of people will say, you know, oh, well, he ain't said this, but I am going into search. I'm going to be laid up. You know, YouTube is pretty much, you know, what I do for a living now. Uh, well, I'll tell I you what they're going to say. Oh, he spends, he spends his money on drugs. Da, da, da. And even if you did, you still need help now. And, bro, there's people out there who are going to support you and they're going to help you. And listen, man. I just want to understand it, I, not everything not everything is a scam no did I, that, did, I, did I get money under like uh some other shit before i did and you know but it also put us in a home too so it did help us man and like at the time i was a you know i was a drug addict bro i am a drug addict i will always be one but uh you know at, to this day like you know i have not touched that stuff in, in a while now not long because i admit it man, i've never stopped like completely plans. i hope not bro because you need to be as clean as you can be to go in for surgery bro I am, and and you know, you know, I, I tell people all the time, like you can tell, my body gives off a very, very, very small frame, man. Whenever I'm doing that stuff, a lot, yeah. you, you know, right I've done nothing but away. So, you know, yeah, I no. don't want to be a, a meth head, bro. I don't want to be considered that. And if I was to die tomorrow, that's why I would be labeled that. So I need to get that done. You know, get that and out of the way, bro. Listen, I even hate that because there's so many people out there who got issues. I wouldn't even label you as that. I would label you as that had problems that was willing to talk about them to help others like it's it's hard to how i because listen i'll never support you doing meth you have a kid i'm against it that's as a friend to a friend but nobody really who does it uses it to try to help people they all lie they deny it they hide it you brought it to the forefront and yeah. probably helped a ton of people with that uh, well it did it did help a lot of people and you know, even if it had just helped one, it was worth it, man. That's a life. That is a life. You know, that's very that's very precious. And um, to take, and I'm starting to see how precious it really is and how really vulnerable we are when it comes to life and things that happen. And people can say what they want about, you know, I caught flack because I took Bryce to fight a bully one time. I took him right to him. I said, you're going to fight him, and that's going to be the end of it. And uh, they called, oh, gosh, you're a terrible parent. That kid, this, I said, I'm a terrible parent. Why? Because I'm teaching my son. I know where my son was headed. I knew what type of person he was becoming. And, you know, there's even the CPS lady the other day when we were talking, Bryce has been going through a lot of shit. And we had a, a phone call. They let him call me um, from the facility. And he's going off and going off. And within that 30 minutes, I had him de-escalated and laughing and all these things. And she said, you know, I listened to that conversation. And she was like, he tried everything. He disrespected you. He talked over you. He was he was very aggressive and abrasive. I said, 
And she said, you really do know how to like just get to him and, and, and make him feel better. I said, because I love him, man. I said, the problem, the difference is he's surrounded by people that he knows don't really give a shit. Yeah, he don't for a job. Now, bro. He yeah, he, but he hurt him. They are his enemies. Yeah, dude. That's how he is. And he's, he's, I said, but at the same time, I said, he's so, so important, special to me. I said, if, if there's nothing else that you take from this, please understand that that boy is loved. I said, there's somebody out here that will, that lives, breathes, and will die for him. Um, I, bro, in ways, I don't know if you want to hear this, Lance, because the way they did it was fucked up, and that whole Janice lady shit is fucked up. But in some ways, I feel, how could I put this? I don't even know how to really put it. Is, I think this is need, like, it's almost needed, bro. Like, he's going to get some schooling. He's going to get some schooling. You get the breath of, well, I know when I told you last time, I said, you finally got freedom. You're like, I'm not free. This is horrible. That's not what I yeah. meant. It meant you have the time to heal yourself a little bit, bro. To not have to stay on the hustle, to have to make money, to have to get him food, to do this. To I think this is something that was needed. Yeah, not, the way it, not the way. I'm it trying happened. to explain it to Bryce. But I know. Hey, I gotta run down here to the lab and get my blood taken, brother. Yeah, um, bro, Lance, you do you. Listen, if we don't hear from each other, keep me posted, bro, because people are going to want to know how you're doing. At least I like, shoot me a text back or something when you're out of surgery. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, maybe we'll do a, uh, we'll go live or something after the surgery, because I'll be released that day. As long as I'm not too loopy, man, we'll talk. Sounds good, bro. And if you want to do a GoFundMe or whatever, just set it up and let me know. Cool. Appreciate that, brother. I don't you. really know how to do the GoFundMe, but <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. I can get it set up for you. It's easy. Word up. Uh, and, and bro, listen, hey. Before we go, a GoFundMe is a good way to do it because people who don't even know you on YouTube donate GoFundMe's, bro. There's rich people who literally go on GoFundMe's and just, it's a good way to do it. It's a very okay. good way. Yeah, philanthropy. I need it. <laughs> correct. Because I believe if I ever did make it and had all this money, I'd be like that. You know, Because I'm like that now, I ain't got no money. <laughs> bro, tonight's the Mega Millions, bro. I mean, tonight's the, the $2 billion of Mega Millions. I don't, I don't, I've never played the lottery once in my life ever. Yeah, actually, no, I'm not two. It's 1.2 billion tonight. That's what I should That's say. That's a lot of money, dude. Bro, that person's imagine? already picked. They've bro, already picked bro, for This that. is how my brain works. When I think about possibly winning, all I think about is all the people I can help. I don't even think about yeah. what. I'm the same way, bro, man. I could get homeless people. That like, But sometimes you got to think about yourself, bro. A dog shelter, helping families. like because that's. I want to actually, hey, you could probably help me with this. I'm going to shoot a proposal. Okay, because you know I'm in the pallets. I like this my thing. I like pallets. I like to make shit. Well, I built a small building in the back of a, a, the old house there with pallets. Right? It's really nice. It's a building. Uh, I want to promote a piece of land, a nice structured land, and, and put pallet homes on there for homeless people and drug addicts and people that can just go take a shower, spend a night or two a week. Like give them a 30-day thing there. There you go. Here's a home. Get yourself together. Will what? people use it for other shit? Yes, of course they will, but there are people that won't. Why not? And, why not? I'm like, we got all these guys who come out of prison with their skills, and I'm gonna call. That's why I think the Blue Collar Kings is gonna be man a nonprofit organization to build homes for homeless people. And you, bro, you say people use it for other things, but let's face it, I don't know if they have it where you are in New York. We have shooting galleries now. There's little buildings you can go do heroin, and they give you the needles. They give you cookies, bro. When you're done shooting dope, they give you cookies. Yeah, they so do in Baltimore. They do that? Why not give you a place to stay? Why not get these people off the streets, dog? It gets people out from in front of the stores, panhandling. Give them little jobs. Say, your rent is you're going to go to this park and you're going to pick up the trash. Your rent is to do this. Give them jobs that's going to promote like positive community effort. Why do we always have to look at it in a negative realm, dude? The reason they do that is like, to, 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 like you know, if you want to de-escalate the, the homeless population, well, de-escalate your viewpoints. Stop putting them in all in one category, man. Not everybody's fucked up. I fully agree. <laughs> but all right, man, listen, I'm going to let you right, go. the best, Lance. I'll, uh, this will get out there later on. I got to take care of some things. I'm going to put your video at the end and just cool. stay in touch, bro. You know, prayers to you. Absolutely. You as well, man, for your father. And I hope he's doing well. And, um, you know, everybody's. Sounds good, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, brother. Later. Peace. One, two, three, and. Zoro running like a six shot gunning and the miles keep dragging on and on and on Trying to make it home Rapping alone, life been alone When we 
whistling the devil's outlaw song And he strums along He said la 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 The time keeps rolling as the sun keeps rolling And I'm right shotgun along this country road Fighting my demons for all the right reasons And I can't seem to shake the feeling it's all for sure Then the storm plays on He said la 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 Six shotgun and the mouse keep dragging on and on and on Trying to make it home Right been a long one, life been a long Wind whistling that devil's outlaw song